Hello everybody and welcome. Um, I'm just continuing here, uh, here in the studio and continuing to pack the kiln. Um, the last clip, if you remember, we were um, we're, we're doing the, we were doing the bottom, weren't we? Well, I've now, of course, got the first shelf uh, in situ there. Uh, you'll notice that the shelf is covered over with bat wash, which is a mixture of 50% uh, china clay and 50% kaolin. Sorry, 50% kaolin or china clay and 50% alumina. Alumina and china clay, 50-50. You can just mix that up into in a... I've got a... Um, I've just got a... A bottle here that I mix up when I need it, and it's getting getting down to the bottom now. Uh, bat wash. So have that at hand, because sometimes you know you need to retouch up the bat wash on your kiln shelves. You may not need to do it uh, each time you fire. Um, so I'm just now just thinking about this shelf and what we're going to put here. At the moment we've got uh, a stack of GP bowls there and there and I'm actually I'm a bit of a quandary because you know I've got these um, I've got these kiln shells a lot of them are new I've got these ones here these long ones for high temperature and I've got some shorter ones as well but I just don't have really the right ones that I want which is a real pain and I don't want to have to get my angle grinder out and start cutting them up right at this moment because I just want to get on and get the kiln packed <laughs> so um, I'm over there on the table and uh, I've got a number of different pots here that I'm going to be putting in here yes yeah, a faceted faceted pot here this is a lidded and fluted a lidded and fluted sort of like ginger jar type pot or biscuit barrel and then I've got these tall fellas here taller closed in bottle forms and another one here which I'm just about to to glaze so why don't you watch me um, hopefully I'll It's a challenge, isn't it, when you come to glaze certain shapes and forms, and uh, I've got some glaze down here in the bucket, but the glaze is, is somewhat down now. It's, it's uh, you know, I've got like sort of six inches or so uh, left in the, in the bucket, so I've got to, I've got to glaze this fella. Um, so how am I going to do it? Well, one of the ways that you can glaze a, a piece that's say a, a bit of an awkward customer is you can do it like this. You can set up on a banding wheel, which is probably what I'm going to have to do. So I've got a couple of sticks here. In fact, these are rulers. You can use any sticks. What I'm going to do is I'm going to in fact pour the glaze over this. Um, this particular piece has in fact got a little bit of a crack here. This was a pot I brought back from Canada and the, in the process, while it was still, before it was glazed, the, it was kind of bone dry pretty much. And the top, it broke off, it, it, the lip broke in the car, you know, when I was transporting it. And um, so we did a, we softened the, the top of the pot with water and, and chamois leathers and everything and got it all soft again and then I put it back on the wheel, got some soft clay and I re-threw this lip onto it but it has unfortunately cracked just there so but I'm going to fire it anyway I can't even remember what the clay is, it's something something from up there from the workshop I did in Peterborough hello all of you up there in Peterborough <laughs> All of you lot. Yes, that was a great workshop. We enjoyed that. And it was, it was great to be up in Canada. Uh, what, what a fantastic country. What a great expanse of, of terrain they've got up there. My goodness. 
and they're all very nice people as well. And look, there's a lot of potters up there I'm discovering, so that's great. So, anyway, what I'm gonna what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do with this pot is I'm gonna pour because I haven't I can't I haven't got enough depth for glaze to dip it completely. I can't really put it into the into the, the bucket and roll it because I haven't got room for my hands. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour in, swirl it around, pour out, okay, and then I'm going to locate this. Oh yeah, then I'm going to dip, just dip it a little bit over the shoulder. Then it's going to go here on the with the sticks and the banding wheel, and I'll show you what I do. All right. So we're just going to give the blades a bit of a stir. Yeah, when I mixed up this batch of uh, Sullivan glaze, I mixed up a half batch because it was like a new recipe for me and I wasn't sure. My dear brother Jeremy sent me the recipe and it was a little bit difficult to read and I thought, well, I'm not going to mix up a whole batch of glaze. I'll, I'll do half a bucket and then I'll, I'll try it in the kiln and see how we go. If it's, if it's good, then I'll mix, mix up a full batch next time. Okay, let's go. So, we're going to take some glaze in our pouring jug. We're going to take the pot, we're going to pour the glaze down inside. Just pour sort of like a quarter full, give it a... Having remembered to have dusted it, of course, beforehand, which I did do earlier, now we're going to pour out. Okay, now we're going to just, now I've got to get more glaze in here quickly now because the thickness is, get, is gathering, you see, on the, like that, over the rim, these here like that, banding wheel there like that, that like that, and now we're going to pour over Okay, now I'm going to lift it there because I don't want all that glaze to stick it to the... and I can just touch my fingers up afterwards, you see? Alright, so... What do we make of that? Well, there, there it is, down there. Oh, what's wrong with the zoom on this camera? Oh yeah, there it is. Hope you can see that. It's glazed pretty much nicely all over. Which is good. Okay, let's go. Let's just go back there to the. Now, of course, you say, "Oh, well, Simon, what a mess you made of your banding wheel." Well, it doesn't matter, does it? The important thing is that the pot is glazed. Who cares about the banding wheel? We can just we can just tip that off. You see. Of course, before I did this, I made sure that the banding wheel was spotlessly clean, all right? So wash your banding wheel if you're gonna do this. Um, my ruler's here. Okay, this, the important thing is we, we managed to successfully do the pot. These are gonna go over to the sink here and be washed. Better to wash these things while they are still wet with glaze because if you let the glaze dry, you've got twice as much work. But if you do it while the glaze is still wet on there, it just rinses straight off without a problem. So, what next? What next indeed? Right, well, what next is dry my hands. The next thing we've got here is another pot which is pretty much the same but with this pot I think I'm going to get down in there and I'm going to roll it in the glaze. Okay? Before I do that though I'm going to do the, the inside of the pot. So let's pour the glaze in. Pour it out. Okay, now I'm going to take it and I'm going to straight down and roll it in the glaze. There we are. Done. 
Remember, fingerprints afterwards with a with your with your brush. You can dip in the glaze and just carefully just touch those places where you've had to grab hold of the pot, but simply because you had no other choice. So rinse hands again. Thank God for running water. What have we got here now? Well, we've got here, we've got a lidded, fluted pot. Now, okay, with a pot like this, it's actually quite important to really make sure you give it a really good dusting. And I have already, with my brush, gone up and down the flutes of the pot here, carefully getting all of the, if there is any dust around, because in these pottery studios that we work in, there's always a lot of dust, isn't there? So, I've given it a once over. So, now what we're going to do here, let's see. Yes, I think it's going to be a roly-poly with this one as well. And it's going to be glazed inside and out, all right? Now, where the, where the lid fits like that, this part of the lid here, where my finger is, the gallery, is not going to be having any glaze on it. Obviously, otherwise it will stick. All right, so let's just do the, um, the main body of the pot first. We're going to pour a bit of glaze in, swill it, pour it out, straight down in without any hesitation. You've got to kind of roll these and float them at the same time. They dip it out. Remember the foot, if it's got a turned, trimmed foot on it, you may also want to tip it out of there. Okay, what next? This guy, I'm just going to pour inside the lid only, all right? And then we're just going to revolve it like this around. All right, and then pour out, job done. Now, always have a handy a sponge, okay? So you can just, as I say, always easier to wipe off when the glaze is wet. Okay, and now I'm just going to dip the top, just dip the top in the glaze without going over the without going over the edge. Okay. Like that. Well, I wasn't 100% successful there. As you can see, the glaze has just come in a bit. But that's okay. We can, we can clean that off. All right, so that's gonna then sit on top of the, on top of here. But of course that, I'll just get my, my knife blade. I'll just show you. God, you're making me work this morning. <laughs> All these things to show you. Um, okay, what you want to do, what you want to bear in mind is, is the depth here that you've got, okay? And I use a knife like this, okay? And you can just mark the depth, okay? Then if you take your pot like this, you can mark, mark the depth pretty much. Okay, so I'm just, what I do is, with the blade of a knife, now I know a lot of you are probably saying to yourself, well Simon, why don't you just use wax, it's a lot simpler. Well, in actual fact it isn't, it's more work. It depends, you see. If, you, if I had 20 of these to glaze, yeah, then I would wax them before I dip them. 
But as I as I don't, as I've only just, as I'm just doing this one. Um, To have to heat wax up just for the old pot is a waste of time because I'm going to be having to be waiting here for that wax to get hot and I could be getting on with it. I could have the job done, you see. Wax does save you some time, I don't deny, but Likewise, in this case, with this particular pot, also the, the bottom of the pot here, okay, I'm just going to scrape off with a knife, like that, and clean off. You need to clean off a margin, probably a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch. Clean the glaze away at the bottom of your pot. All right. Okay. So once you've just scraped off the majority with the with the blade of the knife, you just put the sponge there and go like that, and that's it. It's done. Somewhere there is my seal. Usually the seal, I just give a little rub over where the seal is so that it, it shows through a bit more. Okay, so... That's there like that. Just cleaning off the underside here. See, making pots is one thing, isn't it? But when you come to glazing, it goes. It's a whole different. It's a whole different world. Sometimes it's an area where we're not all that good at, isn't it? We, you know, we can be good at making the pots, but when we come to actually glazing them and decorating them, doing all this kind of caper, we, it's that, we, we fall down, don't we? Because, okay, so that's clean. All right, now you can, if you want to, put a little brush of bat wash on the underside in the gallery there. I don't like to do that too much because the bat wash tends to show up rather white after the firing, okay? So I would tend probably not to do that in actual fact. Okay, now if you've got small little pinholes, which you may well do, okay? Don't worry too much about them, but if they are excessive, there's no harm in just giving them a rub over when the glaze is thoroughly dry. You do need to wait for the glaze to dry before you rub it over because uh, it, it, if it's still sort of like this has got quite a lot of moisture still in it. It won't rub over, um, you won't be able to rub it very easily, okay? So wait for it to dry and then if there's a lot of pinholes just give it a little, just lightly with the end of your finger, just a very gentle, being careful if you've got a fluted decoration not to rub it too hard otherwise you'll rub right through and the flute, the, the clay body will show through which you don't want, okay? Okay, so there we are folks. That'll do for now, I think. Giving you some things to think about, hopefully. And um, we're going to get these things in the kiln. I want to get the kiln... I do want to get the kiln fired today. And um, get, these, get these pots uh, into the kiln. So... Um, yeah, visit my website, simonleachpottery.com. Um, we've got uh, throwing sticks there, we've got uh, chamois leathers, keep practicing chamois leathers. Now these chamois leathers that I've made, I've cut, I've made them to the right size. You know, 
one thing is having a chamois leather, but another uh, another thing is having a chamois leather that's too big and unwieldy, and, and, and it's you know it, it kind of slows you down because it's not the right size. Um, these chamois I've made. Well, I haven't got any here to show you actually, but these chamois I've made the right size, just the right length, and they're just the right width. What else? We also we're going to have some sponges on sticks also available on the website. Um, as I mentioned the other day, we're having some leech treadle type wheels made, and I'm having five made. Um, in fact, next week, hopefully next Wednesday, I should have one here in the studio, and I'll do a clip on it then, which is probably a better way of of being able to talk about it rather than just not having something to actually show you. But um, yeah, if you're interested in one of those, please write to me, get in touch. The, my, my idea is, is to sell them, you know. I'm actually having one here for myself and then I've got five others that are going to be made. So um, if, if a leech wheel is something that interests you, then please uh, get in touch. They are very good wheels, they're very, as I said the other day, you know, you become part of the wheel, they're very good at the speed control. Uh, very often, you know, I have students, I, I, I'm saying to them, slow down, slow down, <laughs> you know. With an electric wheel, it's so easy to be going too fast. And I don't think a handmade pot should be made with the clay going so fast, it almost looks like it's been made by a machine. You know, it's get a bit of feel into the clay a little bit more if the wheel is going a little bit slower. So, food for thought. Anyway, I must get on with this. I'll speak to you again soon, no doubt. Keep practicing. See you soon.